Friends, it is Friday, April 30th, 2021. We're looking at a verse from Matthew, uh, the Sermon on the Mount, chapter 5, verse 10, which applies to this issue of martyrdom that we were discussing in the context of 1 Corinthians 13, where we have this uh, wonderful verse in uh, chapter 3 that um, is, uh, if I give away all my possessions and hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Let's bring this a little closer to home by using a pa this passage from Matthew 5.10. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So, um, Jesus was honest with his disciples. It's a wonderful thing that he did not uh, portray discipleship following him as a, a curve that just went upward like this, or a life that was untroubled or a pathway that would not have obstacles and challenges and suffering. And so here in the Sermon on the Mount, he is suggesting that people are going to be persecuted who get into his movement. And they're, if they are persecuted for righteousness sake, for doing and, and believing and holding on to right things, then the kingdom of heaven will belong to them, which is a beautiful promise. We have a lesson here also about uh, something that is is psychological and that is to say that there are different ways and reasons that why people make sacrifices and the sacrifices that Paul was referring to that are, are dramatic sacrifices like Stephen made where you are sacrificing your life or your physical health there are also other types of sacrifices that people make where they're called to serve others or help others. They're giving up time or energy or resources uh, for people or for a cause. Sometimes in the midst of that, they, are you ready? Play the martyr. That is to say, uh, they do their duty in the situation, but they make it clear that it's very difficult for them. And in so doing, they're sort of missing the point of sacrifice. Sacrifice is done out of love. It's not done out of a dutiful obligation that um, should um, that we, we resent or regret. It's done out of an immense sense of gratitude and love for God and for others. And so playing the martyr sort of undercuts the character of, of Christian sacrifice. Um, there's a human tendency also that relates to this business of playing the martyr and uh, we, we might say playing the victim. So this is where um, someone wants to um, emphasize the extent of their suffering or their sorrow to put someone else in the position of being the oppressor. And this attitude too can undercut it can now sometimes we're oppressed and sometimes we are victims and we need to fight for justice and that means someone else is going to have to be named as the oppressor we have to be careful that we don't adopt a posture of being a victim all the time where we are shifting blame for our circumstances for our character for our behavior towards someone else because in so doing um we are actually um it's, it's a kind of indirect boasting. It's a way of exercising control and superiority from underneath. It looks like a sacrificial life, but it actually is, is a life where um, a certain kind of control and ego is insinuating itself into the moment. It's a kind of passive-aggressive criticism that turns others into perpetrators and so puts us on top as victims. Um, to suffer for righteousness sake means that you do so selflessly. If it, It's a chosen suffering. It's not one that's imposed unjustly, although it, it may be an unjust circumstance. It's one where in the midst of an unjust circumstance, because of the world's brokenness or tragedy, we, we choose to embrace it, but we do so creatively with a spirit of forgiveness and love. Let's take a minute and pray. Lord, free us from the need to play the victim or to play the martyr and help us always to be loving even toward those who are putting us in unjust situations and even when we're not called to be passive in those situations but to correct those injustices we ask this through christ our lord amen